grills are hot, dude. <laughs> So in case you missed it, let me quickly fill you in on what happened the last time I tried to shoot a musky on fly hook shots episode a few years ago. It was four days of aching wrists, aching shoulders, aching backs, four days of stomach churning intensity, wondering whether we were actually gonna get a musky on camera. And then at the zero hour on that fourth day, when my buddy Rich Han actually stuck a fish. Rich? On. I will admit to you that it was one of the greatest achievements, yeah. the greatest feelings in Hookshot's history. And the second we let that fish go, I thought even though I didn't catch it, I don't ever have to shoot another musky on the fly show again. And then over the summer I was talking to my good buddy Tim Romano and I said, Hey pal, you and I have not gotten together in a long time to go fishing. What shall we go and do? To which he replied, I, I really want to go fly fishing for musky. Look at you, Tim, so full of optimism, <laughs> so hopeful. I'm not sure why I was so intrigued to go musky fishing, quite honestly. I love streamer fishing. All that superstition, weather-related nonsense. Yeah, really I've been down this road before. Stop, just stop. And then I talked to my buddy Robert Hawkins out in Minnesota who led the charge last time, and he said, you dudes need to come on out here this fall, and we're gonna get both of you a musky on the fly. And just like that, I talked myself right back into it. Partially because a lot has changed for Mr. Hawkins since we tried this three years ago. I just bought the shop here in Minnesota. I was brand new to the musky game. I'd landed just a few out of sheer luck and not knowing what I was doing. And then it all kind of started coming together. I think at this point I've caught a, a 10 muskies. The so last fall was insane. I've met my buddy Ben up on Mille Lacs and 57 inch fish ate my fly way out. I saw a giant head open up, big mouth. Oh my God. Ben's like, you have no idea what you just did. News crews just start showing up at my door. I'm getting calls from like the St. Paul newspaper, the, the Minneapolis newspaper. There it is. I've followed his exploits via via social media and his big fish, so I'm, I'm convinced that we're going out with the right guy. Now one of the biggest differences in the plan between this time and last time is that instead of traipsing all over the state of Minnesota, we were going to keep this local. We were going to fish the metro area close to the Twin Cities. So just to sort of ease us into it, Hawkins takes us over to Lake Johanna. This year I was like, let's just get it done the first day. So I took these guys to like a really high percentage lake. Temperatures are cooling down, muskies are starting to eat more because the winter's coming, they're putting the feed bag on. Let's let four days of insanity begin. I want to put it in my mouth. I want to put it in my mouth. I know nothing about fishing for musky. I think it looks like a beautiful day. I'm psyched to be in sandals and jeans on a boat. Um, but there's no clouds, high pressure, east wind, and just, just not a great wind and not, you know, not a prime situation. You know, I'd rather it would have been cloudy. But it seems like everything in musky fishing matters. Moon, wind, which direction Sermelli's farts blow, um, and we didn't we didn't see a fish. All right, so we call Lake Johanna the warm up. Okay, got the blood pumping, got the fingers moving. So that night we go over to Bob Mitchell's fly shop, which is Hawkins Joint in St. Paul, hang out with some good party people, drink some delicious beer, munch on some crispy cheese curds, and said, you know what? No big deal. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna rock this. So the next day we're jumping from a little tiny lake to a pretty good sized lake, White Bear Lake. Um, and we think it's gonna be great because it's a little overcast, things have changed, but the, the wind is just howling. It's gotta be sustained high 20s. So we just push through, slog it out there, and we go tuck up in a leeward cove. And we were not at it very long before I stuck myself a little pike. Just that one little northern is enough to sort of get the spirits up. Broke the ice with the pikes. You're super excited that first half hour you're casting, you think it's gonna happen, and as the day goes on, it just turns into a grind. We had a nice, probably mid 40s musky follow Joe's fly around. Follow, 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 follow. Come on! 
he was just not hot at all and off he drifted and we fished white bear until the lunch bell rang for us and nothing happened you know being in minnesota the land of 10 gajillion lakes there's plenty of options to go fish. So we're tucking in the back end of uh, Lake Elmo. Looks good, it feels good, the lake's clear. And we're creeping down the shoreline with nice potholes in the weeds. And all of a sudden, oh, there you go, Timmy! Piker! All right, you got some slime on you, homie. Finally, you know, shortly thereafter, we're moving down the shore and I see a friggin' musky cruising by the front of the boat. What, 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 what? No, no, no. So at the at the stern of the boat. He looks over to look at the muskie, and of course... Oh, 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 I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Now, I wasn't looking, so I didn't see what ate it. All I knew was that this fish just dove down into the weeds and buried itself. And we pull her up and out, big pike. But that pike has enough freaking weight that I thought that might have been the muskie. I love northern pike. It is just so hard to be as jacked as you normally would on a fish like that when you're looking for his bigger cousin. You know, that big pike got us more excited. We're fishing some awesome structure and nice weed. Light's getting low. Keep fishing, 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 and nada. What's up, everybody? Whenever I get the urge to go musky fishing, I say that. I'm going pickerel fishing. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. You want them to eat a stick bait? They'll eat it. You want them to eat a finesse bait? Not a problem. Flies? You like flies? They'll eat the out of these. It looks just like a musky. It's long, it's slender, it's got teeth, and if you hold it correctly for the picture, nobody will even know it's not a musky. Do I even look a little bit stressed right now? No. I caught some pickerel. I'm eating Wendy's. Life is good. Mm. Pickerel, okay? Just go pickerel fishing. That's my final tip of the season. I'm out. So step one this morning, steal somebody else's drift boat. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Second order of business, drag drift boat to the St. Croix River. And I have to be perfectly honest with you. My confidence in musky fishing in moving water is much higher than it is on still water. According to the musky experts, uh, river fish, you have that chance of a fish splatting one on the head and they just have to react to it. We go no more than 100 yards downriver. Timmy, 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 Timmy. Uh, Ski or pike, dude? Oh, pike. Big pike, oh yeah. It was a big pike. It ended up being Tim's personal best pike ever. But uh, again, like, big pike. Big pike. I, th I thought that was it, man, but this does not suck. <laughs> And then, story of my life, within 20 minutes of Tim sticking that pike, the conditions changed 100%. Clouds just blow away, we start getting the southeast wind again, and it's just bright and sunny with just this, you know, 15 to 20 mile an hour southeast wind, and it just, the fishy feels just went away. These guys, you know, feel like if it's gonna happen, you at least should see a fish move or flash underwater, and we're just not seeing anything and i won't lie it's heartbreaking to work that hard for zero return especially when you know a whole bunch of muskies saw your fly throughout that day epic streamer beat down it's the last day tim it's too early so now we're down to one full day of fishing left where do we go you know, I had faith in Johanna, went back to Johanna. I pre-fished it before these guys got here, moved two really nice tigers. It looked really nice, glassy, no wind. And we're working this back cove right on the edge of these lily pads, and all of a sudden, and this hole just opens up around my fly. Oh, it's gonna be a musky for sure, it's deep. And it's a friggin' large mouth. By that point in the trip, I think more than anything, we just found it like really funny. Holy shit, dude. I gotta say though, hands down, biggest bass I've ever caught on the fly though. Unbelievable. And we think again, for like the 50th time in this trip that, you know, if a big trophy sized largemouth is gonna eat, why wouldn't a muskie? Yeah, and then uh, nothing. It's just like, come on dudes, just 
Somebody threw us a bone here. And what we ended up deciding was to go back up to the St. Croix. This is the last stand. If it doesn't happen here, it's just not happening. We're just gonna work one bank up and down until we literally cannot see anymore. I have so much faith in this bank. And 10 minutes out of the gate, something explodes on Romano's fly. And he misses it. I'm, I convinced myself it was a muskie. These guys said it was a pike. And somewhere down the line, as it's creeping into dusk, we're working this log jam, and Tim's fly gets blown up on hard. Thought it was a muskie, it just turned out to be another pike. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I just wanted to be a little muskie. And as painful as it was, as it crept in the darkness, I said, boys, we gotta cut ourselves off. We have just beat what is a money bank to the bitter end. And you know what? It's okay. It's freaking muskies, man. The most important thing is that you put your fly in the water where, and put them in front of fish. Either it's gonna happen or it isn't. It's that up and down with musky fishing that keeps you coming back. And when it happens, man, it's just the most electric thing. Man, this is a crazy, crazy game and I can see why people get into it. Now, if there is blame to be laid, it's on Tim. It's fully on Tim. This was his idea, Tim. Thanks, man. <laughs> and as for any of you wondering if this will be the last musky on the fly hook shots, probably. Uh, maybe. Let me, let me think about it over the winter. You know, it's like I always say, if they don't want to eat by now, f them. I want to put it in my mouth. I want to put it in my mouth. I was gonna say, two beer lunch and you were still dead on it. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my god, I'm so in 